All right. Welcome, everyone. Chris Petrie here. We're having a fantastic time. We're creating this beautiful street scene in St. Paul de Vincent in the villages of France. So we're going to France. We have a reference photo we're going to have on the um, video here. So you'll be able to see the entire time. We're going to have our photograph here, our picture on our phone, on our screen. You can follow along with me. We're going to do the pencil sketch carefully. We're going to show you how to lay out your painting carefully so that you get all of your building and um, other information correctly rendered onto your paper, your watercolor paper. We're going to explain to you what brushes we're using. Um, we're going to show you all the colors of paints. Our palette is going to be on the camera so you'll see the whole time what colors we're using. So we're kind of covering every detail you're going to need to get this beautiful street scene done. It's a French street scene, beautiful. Artists love to paint these style paintings. And people go here all the time, every, every year, year after year, people are going to France to paint this beautiful area of St. Paul de Vincent uh, in uh, villages in France. So we're gonna paint it ourselves. We have a beautiful photograph we captured from our online um, treasure trove of information that we can look up on our Google searches. And then we'll just uh, go right through the whole process, all the methods, all the techniques you need to know, all the details of, again, colors, brushes, paper, pencil sketch, how we're going to lay this all out. We're going to measure everything, get everything done just the way uh, any professional artist will um, render their paintings. We're going to show you exactly how that happens here on my channel, right here on this video. So stay tuned. Have a fun time. Hit thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, always and please subscribe too. Uh, you know if you're coming along and this is your very first time watching my video Please subscribe this way. You'll stay in tune with me We create beautiful paintings here week after week month after month and year after year. So without delay Let's get right into it We'll get started with our pencil sketch and laying out our painting and then from there We're just going to get into the real uh, nitty-gritty details of everything of how we're getting all our colors all everything done painting wise and uh, we'll have a fun time doing it. Okay, so we'll be right back and we'll start in just a second. All right, so we just saw the finished painting, everybody. We're having a great time here. We're gonna just cover all the steps, the methods, the colors, the paints, the brushes, all that we're gonna do, the drawing, the painting portion, everything, the washes. We're gonna cover all the information you need to get this painting done. And again, you, you saw the finished painting. It's a beautiful painting of St. Paul de Vincent uh, village in France. So we're going to kind of really uh, enjoy this. We'll pretend we're on a trip there. Maybe someday we'll take a trip there and we'll all go there and paint together. Um, that's some really goals we can have. Maybe we'll have some trips in the future, some plain air trips out on some vacation time. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is uh, let's t I'm going to take a pre-cut mat that you can find in any of your stores, your big box stores, art stores. You can order them online, Amazon, you name it. Pre-cut watercolor mats. This one is uh, 11 by 14 would be the frame size. So this is an 11 by 14 mat frame size. And then the window opening is seven and a half by nine and a half. So the thing I want to do is I just want to make sure that when I'm painting this painting and I've taped down the borders because I think that looks great. Once you're done painting, you can just lift up the tape and you have an immediate, beautiful, crisp, clean edge around your painting. Looks fantastic. You can just really like really pin it up on the wall with some magnets on the fridge and it looks great. It almost looks like a, like a mat on top of your painting. So I always encourage everybody and I always mention this, you know, put a, some tape around your painting if you can. It looks great when you're finished painting and you just lift off that uh, tape. But the main thing is here, I just want to make sure that my um, painting is going to be large enough to fit inside this window. And I can see that it already is. My paper size is fine. And what I do is I just take the mat and I just make sure I go over the top of the paper. And then I sort of just go down and make a little dot just to make sure. So I make a dot in each of the corners of the mat, the pre-cut mat, like that. And then I say, this is perfect. So this piece of paper is a perfect fit for this pre-cut mat that we have here. And uh, I don't have to worry about anything. My tape 
is going to be perfect. So my taped border around the edge will be just right. I'll have a little extra room to move my mat around like this, just a little bit, a little bit of wiggle room to uh, mat and frame this, if it comes out good. Uh, I create some clunkers, as I call them. So we all create clunkers once in a while on our paintings, and it's no big deal. Even the great, great artists that you'll hear in books, you'll hear them, or in interviews, you'll hear great artists even say this, like the great famous artists, they'll tell you that maybe only 10 or 15 or 20% of their paintings turn out what they would consider like excellent, great paintings or, you know, fantastic paintings that they're going to want to sell, you know, and put into, you know, the galleries and whatever else they're doing for sale for, you know, gallery showings, so forth. So don't, you know, don't worry if you're painting quite a few clunkers along the way, you just keep going, keep painting, no big deal. Um, and then the, the really excellent paintings that turn out just phenomenal, those are the ones you're going to maybe uh, put into a gallery eventually, or maybe you're already um, showing some work in some shows and some galleries, whatever it is. But uh, let's uh, just keep that in mind that we all do some clunkers here and there. And uh, you'll see some of my clunkers on my videos sometimes when I just don't have that real focus that I need sometimes. You know, I'm tired sometimes and I come on and make a video and you'll see me create a clunker video with a clunker painting and that's all right. We all do them. So uh, let's see now. We're going to look at our photograph here that's on our camera and what I'll basically do is just kind of try to figure out the basic um, layout of this scene. So I'm already kind of seeing how the top of this arch coming across the, the page in an arch like this, and it comes down about to a third of the way down on the paper. So if I go one-third, approximately two-thirds, and three-thirds, so if we go thirds, you could even take a ruler if you wanted to. You could take a ruler and then just kind of figure out what your third thirds are. So I have ten inches, so approximately three, three, a little better than three inches is going to be a third. So I'll take maybe a three and a quarter, six and a half, and then ten. So that's about thirds, roughly. Three, approximate. So now I have my hash marks here and I say, all right, let me look at this photograph and I say, all right, so the arch comes across and it lands about on the third point here, third hash mark here. So that's the first thing I can do is I can kind of come across here with a soft arch like this, like that. And again, this is approximate. You don't have to be perfect with it. Then I notice that there's some uh, stones that go across this archway and they're somewhat thick. So I'm going to make that those stones that are going across the archway like this. And then I can just take some approximations of lines between the stones. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's about good like that. Okay, now I'm doing some really light pencil lines. Let me go a little darker right now so you can kind of see. Um, so I took my arch and I went across like this. And I went down here like so. Then I went across here with another bit of, um, these are stone blocks that are actually, a, that comprise the, the arch. And then above here is some stonework, rough stonework, and it looks like it's ashlar stone, which might be like some roughly squared stone so no big deal you just make some square looking shapes and you you have it now the next thing is what I'm thinking is let's try to get as much um, as much architecture as we can to start with and then we'll go for like some of the details like the signs after that um, so the next thing I'm going to look at is pretty much down the center of the page is the one building here. 
that I can see. That's a pretty good waypoint for me as I'm looking at this. So I'm just trying to get some good um, waypoints or um, critical uh, lines that I see that are made up in this photograph that we're looking at of this beautiful scene in France of the St. Paul de Vincent villages street scene here. So uh, I'm going to say halfway, eight inches. So halfway is four inches. So I just make a little hash mark at four inches and then I just take that line and run it straight up like this. Perfectly plumb up the page. And I make a light line like this across. Like this. And then I also notice that a third of the way up from the bottom or two thirds of the way down we have the street. And I think it's a little bit more than so I'm going to say the street is a little bit less than a third going up from the bottom. So this is about a third up from the bottom, and it's a little bit less than that. So I'm going to go about there for my street. And this here, I'm not going to use a ruler because the street is a little bit on an angle. So I'm going to come up like this, like that. All right, so now we have this building here. And the line of the corner of the building going up right through the center of the page. Then we have up here, we have some beautiful sky color showing through. So that's kind of like a little bit of a window through the painting that's going to really be critical. We want to make sure we get that in there. So what do we see there? We see, let's say this, we have another building corner here and it's about a bit of a distance between the two, but not a lot. So let's say it's about that much, about an inch. So there's about an inch between this corner of the building that we just put in here. So that's an outside corner of the building. And then we have another outside corner of the building here, which goes down this way, right here. So uh, we have about an inch of space if we're looking at it in the same scale here. So let's do that. Let's get another line across here. Just a basic line going this way. And now we have it. We have that thin, almost like a stripe, right down the center of the painting, which is sort of this building here with the outside corner of the building here, which we have shown here with our line. Then we have another building this way. And this here, let's, let's get that roof in. Here. So this roof is going to, um, let's say, let's take this here and start drawing in the, that's the outside corner of this area here. And then here we're going to, we're going to go across. This is the that's actually the the gable of this roof, the peak of this roof right here, the gable. And lines get awful interesting once you're looking in the far distance. Things look a little awkward looking, so let's not worry about it too much, but. So we can kind of see some angles here. And then here we have another feature here, which is a stone band. There's a stone band on this building right there that I can see. And then right there, when that stone band comes across, then we have another soffit, which is the underside of the roof where it meets the walls of the building right here. So I'm going to take that angle, hold my pencil up to that angle, and then just transfer that over like this. And then I put my finger there to, to kind of keep that angle. And again, there's so much going on in this painting. It's so interesting. You don't have to worry about getting all of these things perfect. If you're getting the angles and the overall idea of things pretty accurate, you're going to be okay. 
So now we have this here. And these are going to be very interesting medium and dark tones. You can kind of see how that's a dark tone here, that soffit, which again is the roof where it overhangs where the wall is. It overhangs, the roof goes over the wall, outside wall of the building, and it hangs over about a foot or two. So that's that dark line you see there. So that's the soffits of the building. And uh, you have that overhanging, so you just want to make sure you get that good strong dark in there. And then over here too you have the soffits up here on this building. And they are here. And again, don't worry about accuracy in fine detail. Kind of just get the overall idea. So now we have the overall idea of the arch coming across like that. So we see the arch coming across here and we're looking at our photograph. We have the arch coming across. Then we were going to get this main building line, which is an outside corner of this building, which we have right here, that comes right down the page. And that lands, you know, uh, about one third up from the bottom. And that's where the street is. And then we can have the street, we can kind of take maybe a line here and just, that's the street here and the curb. The curbing, sidewalk and street. And then if we go across, the street actually lands a little bit over to the left of this outside corner here of the building and it comes down like that and then we have all kinds of interesting things going on over here the key is not to get over uh, overwhelmed with all the details in a painting like this so when you see paintings or you see photographs and you want to paint draw and paint in a beautiful scene like this and you can see from this photograph right here on on camera where, where I have this photograph you know for you here with my cell phone if you see tons of detail like this, you just you have to just take a few key lines and angles and get those in with your pencil first. And then you go in and you just start painting. So we're not going to draw every stone that we see and every single uh, little crack in this, the uh, road here. There's all little cracks in the road and there's all little tiny, fine, tine, fine little stones all along here on the sidewalks. And there's, you know... All these street signs, we might make a couple street signs here. There's only three, so we'll do that, or four. There's one over here I can see. And there's some trees and some bushes here and there. It looks really beautiful. And there's some arches. We're going to get the key things that, that are going to look good. There's some shutters and some windows on some of these walls. We'll get some of those. But we're not. what I'm saying is we're not going to go in and get every stone and try to start worrying about, oh, my God, we got to get every detail. Not really. You're going to see how we're going to actually minimize the details in this composition, in this painting, by um, just picking and choosing what we want to do as we're developing our drawing. And that's all it really is. So you're kind of seeing how I'm just getting like the main kind of like features of this, the main lines of this painting. So the first main line we got was that arch, that really beautiful arch going across. And you can see how we did that. We got that main archway right there. Bam, it's in. That's one of the key features of this painting. And there's a little bit of a shadow underneath it. And we can get that in now. We can make sure we get that shadow in. And it kind of, it ends over here. So we can see the underside of the arch up under here, but then it disappears here because of the angle. So we have that. And then we got a couple strong darks here, which are the soffits of the rooftops in this paint uh, drawing and painting that are, that are here in this scene. And um, now that we have a really, we have some, let's say we have four or five critical elements here. We have the arch shape of this beautiful archway here, which is a soft curve like that going across. First thing we got in. Then we said, let's get this one building outside corner of the building right here. We'll get that right down the center of the painting. It's approximately center of the page of the uh, rectangle we're working with it. And then we got a couple angles here for the rooftop over here, which is next to this building. There's another building next to this building. And then we have another angle up this way. We could get that in. That's pretty easy. You can find the easy angles and things that kind of you can find in the composition that might be a little bit easier to place in the, your drawing. So, But you wouldn't want to put in all the little fine details of the stonework and stuff. You can just put in a little bit of that with your brush later when we're painting. All right, so that, that's pretty much 
come, it's just coming along really nicely. Again, minimizing details when you have a painting or a photograph you're working from, or if you're even out there, if we're out here all together, we're going out for a nice plain air vacation and we're going to all get together, bring our easels out here and set up, or just a chair with maybe a, you know, a sketchbook in our laps. And we're going to come out here and paint this scene and we're all going to sit here while the people are just going in the stores and the little shops and we're painting and having a great time. We're not going to be sitting here for six hours trying to capture every stone that we see in all this. We're just going to try to capture a few uh, really interesting details within this scene that we're looking at, even if we're on location doing this, so that we can just kind of come away with it having the essence of what we're seeing. So that's the, the long and short of it. And then here again we have this other building line which we showed before. We'll just get that line in one more time. And this is where the shadow incidentally of there's light on this side of so the sunlight's coming across the scene this way. Another thing we can do, which will really help us, and you always see me do this in my paintings most times, we just take a little insignia and we make, we make our insignia with our light like this. So we make a little spotlight right up here in the corner on the tape, not on our paper. And you can kind of see how I do this. I just make that little bit of a triangle that looks like a spotlight and now we know the sunlight's coming from this side of the a composition and coming across this way. And you can see how that is in effect here in this painting, in this photograph. You can see the lights coming this way and it's hitting and striking this wall, these walls here of these buildings and even on this arch and then over here on the left is the shade. So we're going to capture that beautiful light in this painting as well. Light is the key to you want to really always remember, try to, if it's a cloudy day, obviously we can't get a really interesting effect like this, but you could put it in. You could actually just sometimes if you're painting on a cloudy day, you could just in your mind know from past experiences what it would look like in sunlight and you could actually create a, on a cloudy day some sunlight effects if you want. But um, in any case, that's kind of going uh, into... Um, I guess like techniques when you're out in the field and things like that, painting. But in any case, let's just stick to the basics here. Again, we're getting in our drawing, our pencil sketch, our basically our preliminary sketch, and then we're going to continue on. But let's let's take a break now. Once you take quite a while of drawing and laying out things in your drawing of your painting, you're going to want to take breaks maybe every 15 or 20 minutes. Maybe you don't need breaks, that's fine too. I usually need a break about every 15 minutes or 20 minutes. This way I can just kind of relax a few minutes and then come back and then get a fresh look at things and what I'm doing and game plan a little more before I go in and continue working. But right now we have really some really good information now with our pencil sketch, our pencil drawing, that we can really be confident that we're on the right track and really going at a good pace here. And um, maybe we're going to actually add some of these these uh, archway stone joints that come across here, like that. Okay, I just wanted to put in a couple of these cement joints in here. Okay, all right, I'll be right back. And hey, I always mention, if you like this video so far, give me a thumbs up. It's always great if you can give a thumbs up. It helps my channel. It helps more people to come along and join along with us. And also YouTube also, if, if you thumbs up in the... Um, down below here on the left hand side there's that thumbs up button you click that button it actually helps because it, it YouTube will share this video with more people and then we'll have more people coming along and having a great time with us so we want to have as many people as we can joining along and having a great time with watercolor painting and drawing and painting and watercolor and it when we paint and draw we all know we're artists here all together we know when you're in here having a lot of fun and we're doing these videos together and working along together we're kind of in our own little world, our art, artistic world, and we forget about all the problems and the worries of our d daily struggles and all the different issues that we have in life, and we just kind of get in the zone and get in here and do our work. So that's why I say if you thumbs up, it'll help more people. More people will come along and join us uh, the more popular my channel becomes on YouTube. And then also, if you subscribe below on the right-hand side, it's a great way to just um, keep in contact with what we're doing on a consistent basis. If you subscribe, all it does is just you'll see my videos the next time you open up YouTube, and it'll just show you the newest videos that we're working on so you can keep uh, 
keep up with us and keep uh, on pace with us here as we uh, go forward and create more paintings as we go each uh, week and each month and even year after year. We're continually working here together. So I'm going to take a break and we'll come right back and we'll get started again and get some more pencil um, lines in here. And I think we're pretty close to um, starting the painting. So we'll just have a few more sketch lines in here and then we'll we'll start to paint. All right, so we're getting back here, and uh, let's take a look here. Uh, now, what I always say about breaks is when I when I take breaks, I definitely come back and sort of I'm um, standing further back from the table, my my art table here that I'm working on, and I can already sort when I'm kind of walking up to the table and I'm looking at the photograph and I'm looking at this, I say I already see a few things that are that I kind of find are having a little bit of an issue, like this angle here. From the photograph to this here, this is not steep enough. This needs to be steeper on an angle this way. It's only a little bit, but it it would make it it will make a difference. So that's why I say, please take breaks. It, you can you can come back and look with a fresh set of eyes, and you'll maybe find a few things that you can just make a little bit better. So now here, if I look at this and kind of look at it as a clock and I say all right this is 12 o'clock one o'clock two o'clock this should be about two o'clock one o'clock two o'clock so I can see yeah this angle is off it needs to be more like this so there we go we get that angle a little bit better and that's going to be something that will improve this overall composition in this painting is having this angle a little bit better right much more accurately to the photograph we're looking at here. So that's exciting when we know we can make a little bit of a change and know it's going to be a probably a big payoff in this painting because our our eyes actually are, are just natural human eyesight. People, even general people that don't even, are not even interested in really painting or drawing, when people look at artwork, they pick up odd angles and they pick up things that don't look correct as far as just our eyes are calibrated and adjusted to natural things we see all the time. So if, if our angles aren't pretty close to correct, people will pick up on it, even if they're not, you know, artists and things like that. Artists will have better vision. So as an artist, we have better vision. We can see like angles that are off a little bit more than other people will, like natural, you know, people that are just, you know, um, everyday people out there in the world that might be looking at our artwork and maybe shopping for some paintings and things like that if we have our artwork out there online or in a gallery or whatever. So you want your customers and the people, if you eventually want to sh sell your art, and some of you probably already do sell your art and things like that. But what I'm saying is people will generally pick up on, even though they might not, uh, they can't say it and say, well, I see that angle is off. Just in their mind, they'll know there's some odd looking things that don't look right because they just naturally know from living life, you, you see all kinds of different angles and your mind just gets used to the way things look. So that's just a little bit of an off, you know, the beaten track kind of idea and concept. But always remember that as an artist, you have a big advantage if you can really get things as accurate as possible to the angles that you're seeing as you're working on your artwork and drawing and painting the closer you can get to accuracy, you're going to be better off. If you're sloppy with your angles and things like that, that will really can be a, an issue. And we are working with some more complex angles here and things like that. So I will say that, you know, um, if you're just drawing in two dimensions and you're not having a three-dimensional drawing, we're doing three-dimensional uh, composi uh, composition here, so that's a little more challenging. But again, it's not really that difficult. It's just a matter of taking a look at it and saying, all right, well, if we look at this and say, well, this building corner here is 12 o'clock straight plum. What is this compared to that straight line going vertical like that? And then we can kind of say, well, if we're looking at a, a clock, one o'clock is here and two o'clock's about there. So we're at about two o'clock on that angle. Three o'clock would obviously be uh, like a you know, 90 degree angle like that. So this is like, you know, maybe like a 45 degree angle, basically. So we want a 45 degree angle here. I was much, my angle was way over this way. Might not seem like a lot, but it, it is. 
So that's why I say when you take a break, you come back, you look and go, oh, I see that angle's a little bit off there. Let me double check it. And you go there and you double check it like we did and you got it. So good. Good for you that you're looking at your angles too. And uh, let's take a look at these angles since we're working on some of these angles. I think these kind of are pretty close. Here. Okay, so I can see that these are pretty close. They, they're a little steeper. So I'll come down here and make this one like this. This one's a little more like that. And then this one here will come down here another third of the way. And like that. And these will be a few darks that will have some shadows. And these are stone, stone bands that are on the building, just like this stone band here. Basically, these are just like bands, small little ribbons, let's say, or bands of stone that they put in the buildings uh, between each of the floors of the buildings. So basically, these bands that you see, these dark lines, are the floors of each of the stories of the building. So you have your first story, your second story, your third story. And then when they're building the buildings, they have these uh, bands that protrude out from the building, about maybe six or eight or one foot uh, out from the building. And those, were the, those are where the floors are actually on these buildings. So that's just a little bit of architectural um, information. So there we have it. Some a few more really good lines that we have in this uh, drawing so far. And I think we're, again, coming along really nicely. Let's see now. Let's do a couple arches. We have an arch over here. And that's about here. And it's about halfway up like that. And then there's another archway here. And then there's another arch here, and this one's up a little higher. So the arches are getting a little bit higher here on an angle like this. So this one's here. Like that. These arches are going to be important. They look great. And they are an important part of this drawing that we're doing. Because we're going to fill in some darks in these arches. And then there's another arch here. Now we notice that this arch here is all the way over here. So already, and again, if you don't get things perfect, don't worry about it. Add in an extra arch if you have to. And then this one here, we're gonna make a little bit larger like this, like that. And they go up a little bit like this. So if you have to Make them a little bit taller, make them a little taller, the arches. Kind of check your angles. I'm checking my angles here. They get a little taller here. Okay, so you have your arches here, really important. Then we have a sign here, a street sign. I'm going to use a ruler. I might use my um, half ruler here. I just actually took a, a ruler and just kind of um, took a little, uh, took a knife and just scored, scored the ruler, the plastic ruler with a knife and then just snap, snap the ruler in half to make a half. You can buy these half rulers too. Actually, this is a half ruler. I purchased this, you know, I purchased this on, actually on Amazon. This is a six inch ruler. But sometimes I have in the past broken rulers in half if I need to, if I don't have one or if I lose one of my half rulers and I can't find one, I just quick break one in half. But that's just a quick way to get things done. And then uh, here we have um, this sign and it's right along here, like that. And then how is the angle on this sign? It's a little bit on an angle like that. So we can even take our pencil and say, all right, where's the angle of this sign like this? So we could take our pencil and go right down like this, keep the angle if you can, hold the angle on the sign like that. And then you kind of feel it out and say, all right, yeah, that's about it right there. 
And then how about the sign? Where does it end up? It ends up right about here on this side of the arch over here down below. So I'm just kind of looking where it lands underneath and I can use everything I've drawn here below. I can use that as reference points up here for this sign. And then I just take that sign and go across here like that. And there we go. We have that sign. Like that. And then we're going to make a quick little couple of zip a couple angles in there like that and we have it. Okay, as you can see, we're just continually working on things as we go. And um, there's a little bit of a base to this. And again, I'm not worried too much. This over here might be a little bit different. This might not be actually this isn't actually the post for this sign. So that sign just kind of goes right off the page there, which is fine. And this over here is just some more information, some more darks along here. Okay, so now we're pretty much good on this side of the picture. Um, I think we can get just a couple lines in here for windows, just to make some reference lines. There's a little bit of a, a line there, a little bit of a shadow. And then over here, there's a window like this. Like that, there's a window there. You can see that window there. And then there's another window over here, pretty much in line with that window. So you could take your ruler and say it's going to be straight, plumb. Usually your vertical lines are all going to be the same. When you're going through a picture like this, all of your vertical lines a lot of times are going to be the same. So your windows, your corners of your building, they're all going to be plumb, straight, straight up and down like this, plumb, straight, vertical. So when you're looking at your windows, you know your windows on the sides of your windows are going to be plumb, straight, up and down, vertical. And then um, the tops of the windows will be a little bit on an angle, like this. And then over here there's a tree, so we're going to get a nice tree kind of thing going here. So we'll get some shapes of some branches and the tree top here. And uh, what else do we have? We have a few more. We have another. We have another um, window here by this sign. Behind the sign, it's on the wall, far behind this sign actually. But that's the shadow underneath the window sill. And uh, what else do we have? We have a few more windows over here. So let's get some of these. Just some basic sketch lines in here. And there's another grouping of windows here. One there. Okay, so you just can see how I'm using my ruler to get these straight vertical lines for these windows that we can see here on the um, photograph. And what I'll do is um, in the beginning of the video, I will show a close-up of this photograph, and you can also look it up online. St. Paul de Vincent Villages in France, and you'll be able to find photographs of the villages in France, and you'll probably find this one too online. So, um, I think we'll be taking a break in just another little bit, maybe a few more minutes. Let's keep working a little more. Um, I see another bit of soffit up here like this. It's a little bit of a dark up here. We, we want to get that in. And uh, what else do we have here? Uh, let's get in the wall here, which is right underneath this soffit. So we have this dark soffit, which is that dark line, thick dark line that goes right across here. It's right here. 
that's the dark soffit and then right here is the wall and that's the actual inside corner of that building where it butts up against this wall here so let's get that line there and we'll just get that line down like so and uh, we're gonna again we're not gonna get too involved with a ton of details again I'm just gonna see that I um, there is a window here let's make that window over here that's the kind of a narrow very very thin window and if I look at it it's about right about there so that's about good there then there's a street sign that comes across here that's a nice really dark black sign that's a really dark black sign with some white white writing that looks really good and there's another sign here that's over this way that's like that we're gonna get that there in then below that sign you're gonna see an archway so let's do the arch here like this and there's another vertical line here and then there's some vertical lines here just for some windows and things but they're the angle is such that you really don't see a whole lot of details um, and then here you have riding up along here you have this like that another wall going up beyond this here and then we have another dark here which is a little bit below this this is like a window and uh, it's just above this sign here like that like that like that so I think that's all we need is a little bit of a an idea of a window with an angle on the top of the window like this Again, you can take angles and just hold them up to your photograph or your phone or your TV or a picture in a book, whatever it is. You just hold it up alongside where it is and then you just keep holding that angle and just transfer it over like that. And then you can kind of get that pretty close to the angle that you need. And then I think we're pretty good here. Let's do some of the stonework. These are some uh, small... Um, walls like little small uh, planter planter boxes that are along the road and sidewalks here so I'll just do a couple indications of those nothing too much I don't want to get too bogged down with too many details here we want to stay away from kind of that idea of trying to draw every little stone and, and rock in this composition so this is here is another wall like this so I'm just going to draw the wall coming out and it's pretty much level so it's level it's not angled this way or it's not angled that way it's straight level so I just take my ruler and hold my ruler level and say okay let's get a couple of these planter boxes and they're pretty much level like that so these are level and then we have some bushes in here some greenery so we're gonna have some fun splashing on some greens here and there in our painting again um, we're not going to get I'm just going to create a little bush here a little higher than what I'm seeing in the painting you can create and adjust your paintings and do a little th couple things different here and there I see a little bit of a plant um, a, a pot looks like a stone pot with some plants in it and maybe a tree so um, and I think that should be good Okay, and we're going to have some more, there's another pot here and some more plantings. Over here there's another bit of some plants there and then we have some figures. So the figures are over here. Okay, so we have a couple figures here. I'm just going to draw the head first and then the shoulders and then the legs. And then there's a few more figures over here too. I'll keep the, the heads at the same height, so I'll take my uh, 
the heads are the same height, just so I kind of have that line going across. And then there's another couple of figures here. And then there's another person over here by this arch. Actually, by this arch here, there's another person with a hat. And they have a shopping bag. We'll put a shopping bag there. Just a few figures in here to make it look interesting. Another figure over here. Okay. I think right now we have enough information that we can start the painting. It did take some time to develop the drawing, but that's the key. You want to kind of get your drawing in there um, accurately as possible, but not, again, not doing too many details. We did not do every detail in this um, picture. And I think right now what I'll do is I'll move my picture over on camera here, just so you can kind of see what this looks like. And I'll maybe leave it on there for about 30 seconds so that you can kind of see what the actual picture looks like, the photograph that we have of this scene. And maybe you can take a screen capture of it if you like. But that's basically what we're looking at. And by chance, if you'd like, some of you might be maybe newer and you're just starting out in watercolor. Maybe you've only been painting for a couple months or so and you say, yeah, I really like this, but it's too much information. I don't, I can't draw that well right now. That's not a problem. You can actually take this scene and zoom in and just make a smaller painting of it. So you can zoom in like this and you can actually take maybe just a small section of it like this like this. And then you can just see how beautiful that looks. That looks beautiful right there. That's a great painting. And it's more of a landscape painting, so it's not really vertical. Our painting that we're doing here on this video is more of a vertical um, positioning for our um, painting. So we're using like the portrait style where our painting is sitting upright in a vertical position. This could be a good uh, horizontal painting where you have your painting in more of a, a horizontal fashion. So you're making your painting uh, longer this way across. So you'll be going across this way, this way, uh, across this way. And you can see how good that looks. You have a beautiful light in this picture right now. The light of the wall over here with the light splashing across this wall and then all the darks and the shadows, the middle tones. You have a perfectly beautiful um, arrangement of darks, middle tones and lights in this actual, this, this thing that, you know, this scene that I'm zooming into right now. That's what you would call like, you know, your perfect um, uh, ratio of lights, darks and middle tones. You have predominantly middle tones here all the way through here and here, and then you have, it's close, but you, this exciting light is maybe, um, you could, you could drop this down a little bit and make your light a little more. So now you have, as we call the pint court gallon, you have a gallon of middle tones right here. And then you have a pint, or you have a quart of lights, a quart of bright lights here, and then you have just a small pint of darks where these arches are and some of these um, darker darks here where these uh, trees are and uh, bushes and small plantings and some of the arches, those little bits of darks, not too many of them, kind of like a pint if you were looking at it from a pint quart gallon um, ratio of light and darks. So that's another great thing you can think about. And I think um, this is another painting we can do eventually. So look how great this is. We can do a larger painting in the vertical positioning like we are actually creating right now, like that. 
painting right now like this. And then we can go in and do another painting after. Maybe in a month or two, we'll, we'll do another painting of this, drawing and painting, and we'll, we'll zoom in and we'll create something like this. Like that. That'll be fun. All right, so we have some work to do, some fun projects ahead of us, and uh, let's continue on here. So I'll take a break now, and when we come back, we're actually going to start painting. So we'll get, begin our painting in just a few, few seconds. Okay, so let's keep moving right along here. We're going to get into uh, painting now. So I'm going to probably, I'll use a number six round uh, brush. This is a, a Charles Reed series, uh, a Skoda brush, travel brush. And this is great. You can use this if you're like doing any kind of plein air painting or if you're traveling at all. You could take your brush and stow it in here. You could put this in a backpack or your pocket or whatever, and you can take it out and paint with it. These are just fantastic brushes. Sable hairs, so these are really wonderful to paint with. So I'm going to use this brush, number six. And uh, let's see now, we're going to go for the darks first. So we're going to do this a la prima. We're going to start with the darks first, the darkest tonal values. So we're just going to look at our subject matter and say, all right, where are our darkest tonal values? And we can kind of start, maybe I'll start up here in the soffits of the roof and soffit areas up here above. And I'll go with some brown, French ultramarine blue. So I'm going to get some darks started. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna maybe with a little French ultramarine blue. And then we have some burnt umber over here. And then maybe some cerulean blue over here. So I'm kind of making I'm making a mixture of warm and cool uh, colors here, and more toward the darker tonal values over here. Maybe a little bit of orange and red, just so we have a good mixture of interesting colors. And then even some. Uh, Yellow ochre, too. Put some yellow ochre here. And then we'll just start working our colors in here. These are darks. And the darkest part of these washes seem to be along the outer edge of the soffits here. So I'll add a little more darks here along this outer edge, like that. And then there's some more reds and let's get some blue in there too. I want to go warm and cool everywhere. And I think I noticed that uh, the underside of this arch is here. So I'll start to work my uh, shadow colors here. A little bit of cerulean blue. And then as I get, go over this way here, it gets a little thinner. You can kind of see how the shadowing gets thinner here. Like that. So it's... Thin over here. So that's the arch, and sometimes you can lighten up a little bit of the uh, washes with a little bit of a, you can blot a little bit with a tissue if you want to just lighten up a few spots. Like that. 
And then there's some some joints here. These are the stone, the mortar joints and the stone. And they're a little bit more pronounced there. And then over here toward the right, they're not really too much playing a factor in the uh, painting. They're just very, 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 very slight, if anything. And there's some cement joints over here. So I'm just going to get some of those cement joints in like so. And then maybe I'll add a little green to that. So I'm going to add a little bit of green to my um, cerulean blue. Sap green. And I just splash a little bit. And just blot a little bit. So I just want to try to get a little bit of color over here. A little bit of a uh, yellow ochre too. So I'll get a little bit of yellow ochre over here. And that's stonework so we're kind of just going to get some color. Some green. And I'll blot up even too. The sun is actually hitting this portion of the painting over here. So it's really quite light. So maybe I add a little bit of color and then I blot it up a little bit. And then uh, add a little more, a couple little darks here and there, a little tantalizing darks just in a few spots. This way people can wonder what's going on there and we're telling a little bit of the story with the stone mortar joints but we're not really spelling it all out clearly. And then over here we have some purple, I think some um, ultramarine violet and then some cerulean blue there's some shadowing over here on this part of the wall so I'll start to just add in a little bit of shadow and that shadow seems to be right on the line of this building here so I will do that So the sunlight is, the sunlight's coming from this direction. We have our light insignia here. Yeah, we have our light coming across this way. And we notice here in the photograph that the light, actually there's something in, you know, something that we don't see. It's probably another building. So there's another building over here on the left-hand side, and it's casting a shadow right here across the archway. So we have a shadow right here on the archway. And we'll put a little bit of purple and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre for some warm and cool shadows like that and that looks pretty good and then we'll continue on we'll try to get some more of these darks which is um, we're looking at the soffits here across on this building over here and then this this goes this way so we're not going to be again too bogged down with too many details we're just going to try to Get the, get the lines in. There's a little bit of lines you can see in that, like so. And then there's a shadow under here on the roof eaves, like that. And the, the shadows on these uh, eaves here are not too, too dark. They, you know, they're about average. So you can add a little bit of warm and cool in there too, like that. So what we'll try to do is work around the painting, try to get the darks in, or the mediums, you know, medium to dark tonal values, so that uh, that'll set the pace for the painting. Um, over here, of course, we have more darks here. And then another bit here. These are the stone bands that have a bit of a shadow on them, on the buildings. So you can kind of see I'm really getting the darks. And I'm trying to add some warm and cool. So I don't want to make everything... So I'll get some red, cadmium red, and burnt, burnt umber. And I added it to some of these darks, which are tending to be more of in the blue 
French Ultramarine Blue Bird Sienna. And uh, another shadow here. And we're just going to keep looking around and see what we have. Uh, we definitely see some French Ultramarine Blue Burn Sienna. Really, really good dark, strong dark. We see those in these uh, arched doorways here. And you can kind of see in the doorways a lot of times there is some strong darks at the top of the archway and then sometimes it'll kind of fade quickly, the dark, and you'll see a lighter, but yet you'll still see some, I would say some shadows, but not as dark always. It's sometimes darker up at the top of the archway and then it sort of becomes a little bit lighter in tonal value as we go down toward the ground it kind of lightens up quite a bit and then here we have some we have some more blue and dark like that so I'm just gonna try to I'm basically just looking at my photograph and if I have to I'll dry off my brush a little bit on a tissue just so I don't have too much paint and water on there and I can lift off a little bit even too. It's kind of over here on this archway, it's a little bit lighter. It's not as dark. You can even blot up a little bit of paint if you have to. If you notice that you need to lift up a little bit of paint, you can always uh, lift up a little bit of paint with your tissue. So this one here we see some darks there and then this one here we have the dark this way like that and it gets a little bit lighter down here so I lift up there's something there and I just rinse off my brush check off some water on the sponge and then just take a damp brush and try to see if I can work that darker paint down this way a little bit. And there's a little darker bits there. And then some blue, there's some blue here. And there tends to be some purple and blue along the bottoms of these archways here. And then uh, we have some shadows. But let's leave the shadows for last. I'm seeing some shadows over here on the right hand side on those walls. But I don't want to really risk going in and doing too many different things at one time. Let's just stick with the darks first. Let's do that. So we have the darks over here. tones too along with the darks there we have figures here we'll do those maybe a little bit later well let's get the keep working the darker darks um, I see a darker dark over here like this and uh, it's got some cadmium red burnt umber burnt sienna that. Maybe some yellow ochre too. And then maybe some um, burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue for the dark or dark up there. 
and then there's some more dark here and then I'm careful not to lean into this paint over here these arches so I want to try to not lean into that over there so I'm going to keep my uh, keep my uh, focus on trying not to lean into the paint I've just painted over here and I'm just trying to get this dark in over here and there's another dark over here something and then of course there's these signs so we can kind of get these signs in they're pretty much almost they're like black but we can make them French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to sort of have them have them uh, harmonize with the rest of the colors so I don't think I would go in with any black at this time French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna is a, a pretty good dark I think we can leave that like so and we'll put maybe some white paint on these signs to create a little bit of a some calligraphy on there once we're done with the painting we can always go in and add a few things so then here we have some more we have the window there and we have some we have some cerulean blue in these windows they look pretty light like that so I'm doing some very very fine lines with my a Skoda brush here and again I'm trying to work the trying to work the uh, darks first we have some darks along here too Um, over here this window has some dark right along the left side of that window opening is some really really strong darks there so we'll add some burnt sienna French ultramarine blue like that then we can take this and just couple splashes this is a good time to splash a little bit the stonework so if you just splash a little bit maybe you tap a little bit with your finger you wind up getting some nice stone effects And I think if you kind of just tap your brush like this, that gives you that stone feel, texture feel. This up here is a dark. And then I think we have some purple cerulean blue yellow ochre so we kind of have a little bit of a shadow color here and this is quite a bit shadowy here so let's just get some shadowing in like that too right across here I see there's shadow there and even some alizarin crimson so if I have alizarin crimson in any of the so what I do is if I want to add alizarin crimson over here I just make sure I add it some you know other places too
So now I'm going in with some medium tonal values, values as you can see. And that's right along this shadowy area here. And again, there's a lot of stone here. So if I can just do some splashing and tapping with my finger, that kind of captures that stone feel. And then I don't have to sit there and worry about trying to paint every stone or, you know, mortar joint, whatever we have going on. Let's not suffer over the details. Let's get this in here. Do a little splashing, a little bit of dabbing with our finger, and then we get a good feel for the shadowing and the stonework over here on this side of the painting. So as you can see, I'm working the shadow side over here. Might as well just start getting in our shadows over here. So I'm just going to start working my shadows. And I add a little bit of green here and there too. A touch of green to my shadow areas. And I try to keep some areas light too. So not everything is going to be the same value. You're going to try to modulate your values as well on a painting like this. You know, you want to get a lot of variation because as we look at this photograph, you can see there is some light bouncing off around some of the other areas in this shadow, uh, this section that has a lot of shadow. So basically there's a lot of shadow over here and then there's some There's some bushes and trees over here, so I'm just going to get a little bit of um, a little bit of um, splashing and a little bit of uh, greenery over here. There's some greens like this, so we have some greens over here. Like this. Okay, and then uh, this is very light up here, so we're going to leave this like it is. Light, almost like sunlight, is on this section of the the roof, and there is a there is a shadow along here, like this. Like that. And there's another dark shadow up here. That's the soffit up above. But that is actually, that is a little bit below this archway here. So I'm just going to make a, a note of that that the arch is here, the underside of the arch is here, and then there's that soffit area there that we have a little bit of a dark dark up there, <clears throat> a little spot of dark. And then uh, we continue on here, and I notice um, there's some verticals like this. There's some blues and warm colors. There's some blues and warm golds. So I try to mix in the warm and cool everywhere. Some greens, some blue, and then some war uh, cool, warm colors, gold. But I think I don't want to go too much more 
with uh, details. Let's try to be sparing with our details. Um, let's get in a couple of our figures here. So we have a figure here. And this figure has on some blue jeans. So we're going to go with a dark jacket and then a blue, kind of like a blue pair of jeans there. These figures are, luckily, they have some dark, they have dark um, clothing on, which really helps a lot. Because that kind of gives us a really good, that gives us some good, um, some good tonal values to uh, work with here. And then this one over here, we have a figure with a hat on. Here, so we do that. And we'll just put some shadowing and things along the bottom of the figures just so that uh, we can kind of blend them into the to the ground level and we're not making a huge deal out of uh, the figures we're just kind of making note that they're there and there's some yellow and kind of a greenish yellow across here and then it gets a little bit more. We have the um, the roadway here, so we have some asphalt here, like that. And then as we make the asphalt, we can splash like that. Do some finger tapping. Maybe I'll just do a good good wash like this here. And we'll do some more darks here. I guess we're getting to a point where we need a break maybe pretty soon. I'm feeling like I'm working a lot now. For, I've been working for quite a long time, maybe 15, 20 minutes, actually half an hour. So we're at 27 minutes already now as we've got into this painting and we've started to paint and really get in some dark darks. We're doing the a la prima method and of course, uh, you know, many of you that follow me for a long time, you kind of know I'm usually either painting a la prima or glazing technique. And in this one here, we're doing the a la prima technique. Just going in there, getting in the darks first. So I'm just taking all the darks that I can see in this painting and getting those really, really dark darks in first. And then as I'm going, yes, I am adding in some of those medium tonal values, which are some of the shadows over here on the left side of the painting. But if I'm working in that kind of fashion of getting the darks really um, situated first, you're, you're going to have a lot easier time. Does that make sense? If you get those darks in first, it kind of like adds all the really powerful excitement of the dark and light um, effect of the painting. So then, now that we've got the, a lot of the darks in, and we even have some of the middle tonal values here, like on this roadway here, and on the shadows over here on the left-hand side of the painting, on the buildings over here, we're sort of already really, we're, we're almost like more than halfway through this painting now. We're going to leave lots of white paper, because we have tons of bright light coming from this side of the painting, the left side, shining onto these walls over here. So these are going to be white paper, all these walls over here, so we don't really have to do much there. Um, we might add a little touch of some yellow or some yellow ochre to the walls just to give it a little bit of a warmth feel to it, a little bit of cool too, maybe a little bit of cerulean blue. But for the most part, let's take a break now, let this dry. So whatever we've completed so far, we, we're going to let this all dry, especially the darks. We have all the darks in and Things are drying quite quite nicely already. Let's come back in about 5-10 minutes after this sets up a little bit and things dry a little more. And we'll continue on working on this. But I think we're really uh, getting there. We're almost, like I said, 75% complete now. And you realize the bulk of the painting was the drawing. The pencil drawing was the key to this. Really, as you can tell, we spent a lot of time, didn't we? 
didn't we? We spent a lot of time doing that initial pencil drawing and getting the angles all right and trying to really make sure we had the space divisions correct, you know, one third, one third, one third, you know. We're kind of breaking things down into thirds. The arch comes from the top down here to the top down one third and then from up to from the bottom up about a third where the road is uh, in this picture in this photograph all right so we are back and we're going to finish up basically um, we have all of our darks in right now for the most part and we have some of our middle tonal values uh, in and painted in we can add some details. The thing is, with this type of a painting, let's leave the, the details, the, the fine details, to last. We might not need to add much as far as fine detail goes, if, if everything looks good uh, with what we have so far. So, again, we're pretty much looking um, about 75% complete now. And I'll take some cerulean blue, maybe a touch of... Uh, Viridian green and cerulean blue, and we'll get a we'll get some sky color up here, like that, right in this area here. That will lighten up quite a bit. It looks a little bit, you know, it looks pretty light. That'll lighten up even more. And now that we have that little bit of sky in there, that's really looking um, impactful in this painting. So we're kind of seeing through the painting. We're seeing the sky beyond these walls. That's really good. And, uh, we're going to do some more darks here, just have a little more darks. Burnt Sienna, French Ultramarine Blue. Uh, I'm going to get some green here, some Viridian Green. There's some Viridian Green. It looks like some windows here. bit of darks there under the window. There we go. And we'll do a little bit of just a couple uh, indications of windows there. of some shadow, cerulean blue. So we have uh, uh, French, uh, this is actually ultramarine violet, a little bit of cerulean blue, and then maybe a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And that's some shadow colors. And uh, there's something there, a shadow, or this might be a flag. That we have over here and then there's some shadows over here too they kind of seem like they're I'll just do some upstrokes like this this here is some trees over here let's get some yellow ochre and sap green and I'll just do some splashing here 
for this tree. I want to keep that kind of light. Maybe a little bit of a little bit of blue underneath it here for shadowing. And then up top, keep it light. Like that. A couple of finger taps. Maybe even a little bit of uh, cadmium lemon yellow to keep it really, really interesting. More colors. Over here, it's a little bit in shadow, so not so much bright color, but over here we can use some cadmium yellow, cadmium lemon yellow, like that. Some red and brown for the tree trunks. A little bit of blue. Okay. And then we do have We'll take our larger brush here. We do have some more shadows over here. Yellow ochre. Ultramarine violet. Cerulean blue. We see a bit of shadow. This is a building. This happens to be a building over here somewhere out of our sight. Warm and cool, shadowing here, and then it goes across this way, like that. A little bit of splashing, some texture. So there is a shadow over here. That's there. And then it works its way up over here onto this sign, which is in shadow. This sign is in shadow. Blue, we need blue, shadow, cool. Purple as well, shadow, purple is shadow color. Light splashing. bit of uh, yellow over here. Blot up there. That's sunlight there. A little bit of shadowing underneath here on our plants, shrubs, greens. Then there's some more Do some splashing here for our
we have a little bit of a, a tree over here in the, on this side over here so we just do some finger tapping and some splashing and that kind of gives us enough here to kind of give it some detail and some warm and cool darks under here and there's some and I'll just soften this up over here nothing too major going on over here let's just leave that kind of quiet over there and the same thing over here This is shadow over here. This is shadow over here. So this is good. So I think we're getting that sunlight feel. Um, over here, I'm going to change my water quick. And again, we're doing a beautiful scene in France. St. Paul de Vincent villages in France. This is a gorgeous street scene. Um, we're going to add in a little bit of yellow ochre maybe now, just to give us some, some uh, warmth on the buildings here. I'll add some yellow ochre and then blot it up just really carefully and nice, nicely. I don't want to go too, maybe even a little touch of that cadmium lemon yellow in a few spots. Kind of gives it that really feeling of uh, really bright sunlight there. Cadmium lemon yellow, just a tiny touch of that. And then, uh, what else do we want to do here? We have some more, uh, yes, we have more windows up here. So we'll just do a couple more windows up there. Maybe blot them up a little bit. Just a little bit of detail up there. And uh, what else do we have? I think we are looking pretty good. We can do a little bit of detail. That's really going to set everything really nicely for a finished painting. So we have a little dark, a couple of darks over here underneath our uh, plantings planter boxes here, stone planting boxes over here, so we do a couple darks over here, like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just go with a little bit of a darker. that. Nothing too fancy over here. Shadows over here, so I don't want any white paper really. And again, maybe some splashes of greenery for these trees over here. Like that, just to give us a little more of a feel of that.
couple of taps. Smoothen them out a little bit. There we go. All right, so we are pretty much complete now. The thing we just have to really do now is do a few very, very fine details. Let's do the, um, let's, uh, I'm just going to take a quick clean up over here on this and get a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, more French ultramarine blue. That's pretty dark. That looks pretty dark. And I have a really good point on my brush here. So what I'll do is I'll get another, so I'll get some really thick, rich paint, straight paint, no water, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, nice super dark. Dry off some of that paint on a paper towel or a tissue to dry off your brush a little bit because you're going to do some fine calligraphy here on this sign, but we don't want to go with a lot of paint on the brush and next thing you know we're making big blobs of paint on there. That'll be an issue. So we're going to do, I'm just going to try to get some I'm just trying to get some Here we go. Okay, I'm just trying to there we go. Okay, and then we're going to do our couple of fine details here, like that. There's another detail over here. This looks like a Detail there. We have a couple details here. We can get a little bit of a darker dark in there. And I think we're really And a little bit of tonal value there, I think, on the arch, just a little bit. But I think this is really... You can, of course, make a few stone joints here, coursings of joints, and like that. But I think that looks really good. 
overall we have some really good fun here getting some solid drawing in here we have um, maybe we have this line here we we want to maybe get this in warm and cool so a little bit of blue a little bit of brown a little bit of red like that so that building wall is like so and then we can blot up a little bit too we have a window there All right, I think that's good. I think we have everything, for the most part, complete. We might want to do just a touch of some titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Titanium white with a touch of yellow ochre. Just to get this a little bit warmer because titanium white is basically stark white and then I'm going to uh, just do a couple of uh, just some kind of like lettering here a little bit on these signs like that and then over here the same thing just I'm pretending to draw in some things on the signs and this happens to be another sign over here with a metal like that. Just add a few little details. But I think other than that, we're pretty pretty good. We'll call it a day. Hope you enjoyed uh, painting along, drawing and painting along in this uh, video, this tutorial. We can lift up the um, tape and see how it looks when we have a really nice border around the, the painting and we'll just remove the phone off camera here and that looks much better with the tape lifted off now you can kind of see a little more of the exciting uh, washes If anything, I went a little bit lighter on the washes over here to simplify this even more and to make it even better. What we can do is let's take a quick break. I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some darker darks to this shadow area over here. You can kind of see how the shadow area here on the left is a little bit darker than what I have on my paper. So let's get some darker shadows on this section here where the road is going up into this scene into this alleyway in this uh, roadway here uh, between these two uh, this is like basically a, a small um, alleyway going through here with the buildings and the shops and the stores but you can see it's a little darker here than what we have so let's take this we'll show you how you can actually add a little bit of a darker wash over this area here on the road and over here on the left to get it a little more uh, stronger with the shadows as we see in the photo. So it's not really a tremendous amount of work. All we really have to do is mix up some more washes, make sure we do a good job of getting a little bit of, you know, interesting mixes of colors. We just don't want to go over with one color with our shadows. When we uh, correct this and add a little more darker tonal value to this, we want to 
make sure we kind of make it interesting. So we're going to show you how to do that. And then other than that, we're really complete. So let's do our little bit of um, touch-ups here to get this looking more like we have, uh, we're trying to work towards in our photograph here. So we'll be right back in just a second. Okay, we are back again, and we're just going to finish up this painting. And again, when we take breaks, it's always a good thing. We can come back after a break and notice some things in our painting and say, you know what? I looked at my painting, I took a break actually, and I noticed that these areas in shadow over here on the left side, as well as over here and on the roadway, it's all quite a bit darker than what I have on my paper. So in this photograph, you can kind of see that this is quite a bit darker. So I didn't go dark enough, and that's fine. If you go lighter with your shadows, you're okay, because you can always go over with a darker glazing or, you know, another couple bits of darker washes to get it a little darker. But if you go too dark right in the, to start out with, you'll have a problem, because it's really hard to lift up darker washes. So that's kind of like a little bit of a takeaway with, um, watercolors, you can always add a couple extra glazings and washes over something to get it a little darker. That's a little bit easier than trying to lift up a darker wash to try to make it lighter. So that's kind of what we're dealing with right here. We're looking at this and saying, well, we kind of didn't go dark enough with our shadows on this side and over here on the shadows of this painting. So let's take a quick um, t bit of time just to We'll clean up our palette just a little bit, so I'll wipe up the palette and uh, we'll mix some more colors and we're just going to recall back uh, with our colors what we use for shadows. We used purple, which was uh, ultramarine violet, and then we used some uh, cerulean blue as well with our shadows, and we used some uh, yellow ochre. So we had these three colors for shadows, and um, maybe we can add some French ultramarine blue to make it a little darker. So let's add a little bit of French ultramarine blue to this mix over here, knowing that that's sort of what we needed to do here, is to add a little bit of a darker wash to get a better, you know, a better shadow effect. So now we have this, we might need a little more. Let's mix up a little more. Okay, so we have French ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet, which is purple, yellow ochre, a little more French ultramarine blue. We need a little bit of darker mix. All right, so we might be able to get our darker shadow mixture with these three colors. Again, let's try it out. We, the worst we can do is have to come back and add another little bit more of darks. But I think this is good. So I'm taking a larger brush now. I'm using a, a Da Vinci a 30 millimeter flat brush. I'm just going to pick up this dark here and just let's start up here and just go right across like that. And I'll be careful to follow the shadow that I originally created here, like this. I don't need to go over every single bit of this area because I don't want to go over those signs, so I'll leave those signs as is. And I don't have to go over the greenery. I think we can leave the greenery. Well, I'll go over that. The bushes and the... Okay, I'll get a little more water. I need a little more color. Let me French ultramarine blue. We're doing some ultramarine violet, cerulean blue, and yellow ochre. A little bit of water, a little more yellow ochre, and let's just go right across here. And let's see how this turns out.
Okay, there's some shadow that goes up into here too. And this here too. Let's get that darker shadow there. Okay, at home you're going to be the judge. You're going to look at my painting and say, Chris did a good job. He actually created a good shadow effect by adding in some extra color. And let's add some, a little bit of red in there, a little bit of alizarin and crimson. We did use a little bit of alizarin and crimson in the painting. So let's add some of that just to give it some extra um, quality of beauty of color. Like that. And then sometimes you'll have to blot up a little bit if you see some unpleasant looking spots. You just lift up a little bit like that. And then a little more of some shadow there and here. Like that. All right, I think we did a good job here. We added in that extra bit of shadow, which got us to the proper tonal values that we were looking for. We were looking for um, and I can always blot up a little bit of paint or you know, you can see here I'm kind of doing a little bit of where the road is. I'm going to sort of try to Define that a little bit, maybe just kind of like that, you know, give it a little bit of a, but I think that looks fine. Just like that. But I think that looks really good. All right, so we had a fun time here. Maybe a little bit of uh, interesting bouncing of light. We have some maybe some light bouncing off the walls over here onto this shadow area. So you have a little bit of light kind of uh, appearing here and there. Okay. Let's call this finished. I hope you enjoyed this again. Please uh, feel free to leave comments in the comment section. I'm hoping you're subscribing on the right hand side below. We're working here every week, every month, and every year. We're year after year, week after week, month after month. We're creating paintings just like this. All kinds of interesting um, subject matter here on my channel. Boats, flowers, still life figures, portraits, landscapes. We do architecture, buildings, cityscapes, city scenes. We do things from all around the world. We go across the, the world. We travel while we're doing our watercolors in our imagination. We try to go to different places. Here we're in France doing a beautiful street scene in France here in uh, St. Paul. And uh, uh, De Vincent in the you know the villages of France doing this beautiful street scene, and uh, we can reference our, our photographs as we need to to um, get our paintings completed. Again, thank you so much for coming by. As always, happy painting and uh, enjoy the watercolor journey, and we'll see you very very soon.